Thank you. Good evening, everybody. The Jewish state is well known for its high-tech acumen and innovations. Books such as Startup Nation have highlighted how Israelis are hardwired for technology, creativity, ingenuity. Well, today, tonight, we're joined by one of the very, very top minds in Israel, who's helped build 85 high-tech companies in the past 45 years. Please join me in welcoming Yossi Vardi. It's a long walk. Lovely to have you with us, Yossi. Now tell me, tell us how you got involved in this industry, because the word is that every Israeli high-tech kid has your phone number on his phone. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I got involved in it for no fault of mine. In 96, my oldest son came to me with uh, three of his friends. They had an idea on something called the internet, which I didn't have any, any great knowledge about, and uh, they wanted me to fund them. Since as a Jewish mother, I, I, sex-wise sex I'm a male, but gender-wise I'm a Jewish mother, I had a lot of guilt feelings, so sure. I gave them uh, some money, and then after four months they showed me what uh, became the first internet-wide instant messaging, and uh, 19 uh, months later, a company from this area, AOL, came and uh, bought us and uh, turned uh, all of us and me overnight to be tall, thin, blonde, blue eyes, <laughs> very smart, and I'm invited to talk to APAC. Yes, sir. Good, very nice. So this was... Also, also, if I may... You may, you may. If I may, it also... Uh, made me, I was, uh, I was awarded in 2010 by Idiot Achronot, you know, this is the newspaper with the highest circulation in Israel, the title of the worst dressed man in Israel, and if this deal wouldn't happen, nobody would, put in, would uh, give any attention to me, so I want this also as part of well, it. I think we appreciate that you've made an effort this evening. This was... Don't be carried away. This was a $30,000 investment in what became ICQ, correct? That's what you're talking about here. Yeah, it was a little bit more, 75, but we are not going to disclose all that. <laughs> and, and it sold for how much? According to the press, for $407 million. Well, the press, so that must be the truth. Okay, that's quite an achievement. And you are looking very blonde, I must say. Now, thank, now, you, thank you, AOL. We had a chance earlier today. There was a, a session, and they were talking, they were showing... Um, Israeli innovation, this camera that can see through walls and so on. This, this tradition now of ground, groundbreaking innovation in Israel, what do you think is the source? What is it, is it about Israeli culture that makes it such a high-tech driver? Okay, you know, different people give a different explanation to, to it. Some people say it's because of the military, some people say it's because of the great university, some people say it's because of the government involvement. All of it is true, but I will tell you, according to my opinion, the explanation, and we should keep it only between us, us so not, not every country can copy it. The real secret is the Jewish mother, which, since the age of five, tell her son, after all what we have done for you, asking you to bring one Nobel Prize is really too much. <laughs> and when you grow with this kind of challenge, you have no alternative, but you have to go and try and uh, prove yourself. Yes, one Nobel, one Nobel Prize. Really, one right? Nobel Prize, you know, and the Jewish mother have her own way to challenge the kids, you know, by putting in him guilt feelings and panics. You know, we are, we are moving between guilt feeling and, pan and panics. As I already told this morning, my mother always told me why all my sisters and brothers have smart kids. Your cousins are genius, and you are the only idiot in the family, and I have to... No, I am the mother of the 
idiot, and though she finished only maybe eight years of study, she had a very good feeling about genetics, and she said, they are smart, and you are idiot because they are not contaminated with the genes of your father. <laughs> By the way, if I may... You may, Yossi, you may. Speaking about innovation, she was one, this is not known, but I will tell you, she was one of the first pioneers of biotechnology in Israel, because at the time of the austerities in the 50s, she had a little restaurant, and there was no product, you know, so, so she was able to turn every organic substance into chopped liver. And the real source of innovation for Jewish kids is the kitchen, because the Jewish kitchen takes nothing, you know, it's mainly bread and some remaining of... She, she used to do recursive, recursive cooking. Every day she used the leftovers of yesterday <laughs> to cook, and yesterday she used the leftover of the day before yesterday, and we never could figure when she bought the original product. <laughs> I really, I hesitate to say this, but seriously, Yossi. What do you mean seriously? Uh, everything I told you is the truth, is I understand. Truth? And might there be other factors in the success of Israel as a high-tech innovation driver, <laughs> along with... Tell me, why are you trying to lead this conversation? Nothing against, nothing against the, the influence of the mother, nothing against the influence of the mother. There, there are some other Israeli characteristics. Yeah, okay. uh, as, as what we should realize is that entrepreneurship, you know, science and technology and education you have in Germany, you have in, uh, in Japan, you have in many countries. Entrepreneurship is a phenomena of the spirit, you know, phenomena of, of, of the culture. It's a cultural thing. And the Israeli young generation is very entrepreneurial, don't hesitate, you know, they try to reach out, they try to conquer the world, and by the way, it's being manifested in this generation in high-tech, but if you go to the whole history of building the state of Israel, the, the whole thing is one great long startup. You know, you look on Herzl, Herzl came with his business plan, Alt Neuland, which was as fantastic as any business plan which, uh, which you see today, by the way. By the way, don't be so, so enthusiastic about business plans because only uh, people who don't know the common thing to business plan and sausage is that only people who don't know how they are being made are willing to eat them. So, uh, <laughs> and and uh, the creating the industry, creating the kibbutzim, uh, absorbing Aliyah, you know, doing the illegal immigration before 48, uh, it was, all of them was terrific startups by, by very young people, 19 years old, 20 years, 25 years old, and this kind of approach is being embedded in the Israeli society, in the Israeli heritage, in the Israeli uh, genesis. So what we see today is manifestation of this tradition. A continuation of our history. <laughs> Into that you'd add, you know, th this refusal to, to be deterred by the prospect of failure, you know, people yeah, failure, pushing yeah. the envelope, you know, things that other people haven't attempted, not being confined by peer pressure. Uh, it's really interesting that, that those are sort of characteristics that grew up over the generations Yeah, of but Israel. the other things, you know, the education system is great, you know, universities, you see that Mayor Bloomberg, when he wanted to introduce uh, entrepreneurship into New York, he decided to team Cornell with the Technion, which is a <laughs> wonderful... Uh, I think the military create a, create a lot of uh, civilian uh, spin-off. All of you heard about this uh, pill given imaging that uh, from the people who redefined the phrase, the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a, this is a spin-off of the homage, homage system of, of Raphael missiles, you know. So, it works. The graduates of 8200 are creating this, the, the, the best business school in the world. And this is the, the Army's intelligence unit. Shh. Okay.
keep, keep it in the room, everybody. Okay, now you, again, but seriously for a little, you spent 12 years in government from a very young age, by the way, belying the claim not to be spectacularly talented. And you've had involvement in some capacity in, in peace negotiations with Egypt and with Jordan and with the Palestinians. How is Israel collaborating with the neighbors in high tech? And do you believe the industry holds the key to peace with the Palestinians? Israel holds the key to peace with the Palestinians. The Palestinians hold the keys to the peace with Israel. It's time for these two, two people to go and finish the business and carry, as, my, as according to my view, is doing a terrific job, and we should not seize this opportunity. When we have peace, uh, you can uh, have a much, uh, little bit more applause to the work that Kerry is doing. Good. If if we reach an agreement, and when we reach an agreement, I am sure that the area will be like Singapore. I know the Palestinians, they are industrious people. Most of them want peace. Like in every, in every situation, a small minority can spill, can, can, can ruin the whole thing. You know, if you have three uh, flea, flies in the soup, the whole soup is... Uh, is ruined, but, uh, but if we reach an agreement, I am, I am sure that the area will be uh, prosperous. I agree with Netanyahu that security is very important because if you don't have security, the peace will not sustain. But, but I'm, watching, I'm watching the effort that the US government is doing in order to try to bring uh, peace, and I'm telling you this is a great opportunity which we shouldn't miss, and anything that Netanyahu and Abu Mazen agree, all of us should embrace. Is my, my trip, I have to tell you something, personally, which I didn't think about uh, saying, I came from a very difficult, uh, this morning, you know, I don't want to go into detail, I came from a very serious, health issue in the family, but I decided to go to, go to, to hear and to speak to the people, and this round of applause was, made the whole trip uh, worthwhile. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's wonderful. <clears throat> good. We, we did some good being here already. That's wonderful. Tell me now, in the, in the specifics, is there already some cooperation in high tech between, for example, Israel and the Palestinians? Are there things going on? Look, I cannot go, I cannot go into, into detail. In all the Arab countries, the, like, like every society, it's not monolithic. There is a layer of young, talented, civilized, rational people. It's not, uh, not, every, not every Palestinian or every Egyptian or every Jordanian is coming in the morning with a knife between his teeth. Most of the people, most of normal people want peace. And we have to find a way to embrace them, and they have to embrace us. And I know the people that are very talented. I don't know how many of you met the former uh, Jordanian ambassador to the, to the U.S., Karim Kawa. Believe me, he is as versed in technology, and his interests are, are like, like, every, 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 like the best of us, whatever is us. Okay. Now, the... The, the world that you are active in changes all the time, right? The next uh, innovation is overtaken by the next innovation and so on. First of all, tell me, what do you think are the next frontiers that are going to be tackled? And is Israel you know, leading the way in those efforts? Okay, somehow we are able, we are a small country, you know, 8.2 million, uh, million people. And uh, somehow we have like 6,000 startups in every conceivable area of technology which is relevant. I'm now talking about uh, internet, uh, IT, you know, cyber, this, this, uh, ICT, internet computer uh, telecom area, and you see that the best and the brightest companies in this country are coming uh, to, to Israel to look for technology. GM has a uh, GM, General Motors, you know, I thought that the Israel was not, uh, the last car we developed in Israel was Susita. It was made out of fiberglass and so seriously, they stopped making it when the camels in Beersheba ate the car. 
That's a true story. This is true, everybody. This is true. So, so the, yeah, the, these, are, these are the history of the Israeli so we're industry. We're not so good on the cars, maybe. So we are not so good not on so the good. body, but when it comes to the electronic and to the software, they came to Israel. They, de they developed the development center. The, the, general, the general council of GE told in Davos to a forum which had nothing to do with Israel that in order to check the resilience of GE machinery against cyber attack, they came to an Israeli company, hired them to do the, to, to check the system, and so on, and so on. So the Israelis are very good. The areas, you know, there are a lot of areas. FinTech, financial technology, is one very important area. Citibank, open, you heard about Citibank. Yeah, sure. Citibank opened a, a, a research and development center. Barclays went after them, also developed a, a development a, a center. You take Internet of Things, uh, which was manifest, the importance was manifested by Google buying Nest uh, two weeks ago for three billion dollars. Uh, Internet of Things is a great thing. By the way, Google has two development centers in Israel, and Apple, the only center of Apple outside of the United States in Israel, they already bought their third company, not to mention Intel, that employ in Israel. 9,500 people, the biggest facility of Intel outside of the United States, and 40% of every product of Intel is either manufactured or designed in, uh, in Israel. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. That, that, that catalog is... And the list goes on and on. HP employs 6,000 people. IBM employs 2,200 people, Cisco employ 1,000 people, Broadcom 1,000 people, AOL is buying companies in Israel left and right, Facebook uh, j just uh, bought their third company and I don't want to talk about Viber and Waze and all this, uh, it's crazy. And it all Ask me what, what's not, what, what is not good in, the whole, in, in all these things. Okay, Yossi, what is not good about all these things? That's a very good question. I'm glad I asked it. <laughs> what is not good that so far only 11, 12% of the population is enjoying the benefit. directly the benefit. There is this theory of percolating down. My feeling that the percolating down is too vertical. It doesn't go to the sides. We have, we have in, in our... In our society, we have too many groups, too big, which are not enjoying it. Uh, everybody speaks about the Israeli Arabs and the uh, ultra-Orthodox, but there are also uh, groups of social, uh, social economic needs which are still not enjoying this benefit. It's increased the gaps. The gaps are creating also gaps in education of the next generation, and we have, to, all of us as a society, have to embrace each other and resolve this issue. I think this is the, mo the most critical internal issue. Now tell me something that's, that's very relevant to, to all of us here. How did the American and the Israeli people, the relationship between those peoples, contribute to, the, to really the creation of Israeli high tech? That's a very good question. I'm so glad, really. I'm and so they are glad going to like the question. answer, you know. Okay. Because I honestly, think that without the collaboration of the American people and the, America and the Israeli people, we wouldn't have the, the, the kind of high-tech industry in Israel that we have, and I would like to illustrate it. If you look into the high, high education in Israel, I came to this country, I'm a graduate of the Technion. I, I, I have to tell you a story. I got my BSc, MSc, DSc, which is Doctor in Science, from the Technion. My mother was not impressed that I got a doctor because my cousin was the president of Whiteson Institute, you know, so what? Uh, <laughs> no, you, really? you can laugh, but Despite it's a tragedy. the millions, I'm starting to feel really a little sorry for you. Yeah, I mean, so, so when my brother, told, my brother told my mother, Yossi is not an idiot, he got doctorate from the Technion, she looked at him, he say, she said to him, he is a doctor cacker because he doesn't do research and development. <laughs> so, Nevertheless, first of all, I have, to, I have to interrupt you because I think we're doing a very important psychological work this evening and we're, we're dealing with you, these I traumas and that's good, you know, that's good. Yeah, no, that's true, you know, so I, I, 
I got, I got, then the Technion decided to give me an honorary degree. I still owe you an answer to the question. Well, yeah, we'll get to it. That's okay. So I got the honorary degree. It was maybe 10 years after my mother died. So I told her, mother, you see, on the, on the acceptance speech, you know, it was front of the house. It's not as big as this, but it was very exciting. And in my receiving speech, I told mother, you see, I got, a, I got honorary doctorate in the Technion. And I was very pleased when I went to sleep that night, I heard a voice, honorary doctorate is not a real title. <laughs> you, so, you didn't see that one coming, everybody? Now, oh, come on. so the Technion, the Technion, yes. I have done my master, my master, I got a scholarship from David Rose, who was a big contractor in New York. A few years ago, I met his uh, grandnephew. His name is David Ross. You go to the Technion, American philanthropist helped to build the Technion, and the Weizmann, and the Hebrew University, and Barilan. And without them, believe me, you wouldn't have a... Then you go and look to, the, to Wall Street. You know, they always we brag about having the second largest number of Israeli companies listed. Who took us to, to Wall Street? Kenny Bialkin and Harvey Kruger and a few other great people who were committed to these little countries in the 60s, which, which had their camels eating uh, Susita cars, you know, because they didn't have better food. Uh, you go and look on the, on the companies. You know, that we have today, we have today 300 centers of excellence in, uh, in Israel of American companies, most of them American companies, I mentioned the name, we have now Europeans are also coming. By the way, there is a parade, it's like unbelievable, we have a parade of visitors, as if we are animals in the zoo, all the big, <laughs> all the big companies, all the governments, all the, all the international agencies which deal about uh, which, will about, uh, which deal about innovation are coming to Israel to, to see. It will continue like this. I will begin to believe in my own shameless Zionist propaganda. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about cybertech. We're at the forefront of cybertech. Um, you know, how, how is the, the, the Israeli innovation in, high, in cybertech helping Israel and helping the United States uh, uh, remain safe and able to defend themselves? If I knew, I wouldn't tell you, and if I would tell you, they would kill me. So <laughs> that's not a very good question. The rumors are, you know, and, and, and I don't know anything uh, personally. The rumor asks that uh, there is some collaboration. You know, cyber is becoming, not only cyber, cyber and the lens of the, of the video camera are becoming strategic strategic uh, weapons, yes, and, uh, and uh, you guys saw it in, uh, in Casting Lead, what was the name, how you call it in English? Yeah, Operation Casting Oper Lead. Operation Casting Lead, these, these things are becoming very critical, and because they're critical, we, are, we have to deal with them. So there is, there are things going on, again, I please, I, 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 don't, want, I don't want you to have to, to, to do they I don't see, want to, Do they see on the screen the face as I'm making? Like, uh, yeah, I think they can see the face. Yeah. <laughs> because I need to... So that, that, that was a face of complete innocence, is that innocence, what it was? Yeah, yeah. okay, for anyone not, who not, No, I'm not from here, you Yes, know. I'm not from here, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I've never seen you before in my life. I, I had plead, no idea you can ask me that question. Fifth. I understand. You plead the fee for the first? You're asking me, I'm an ex-Brit turned Israeli, are, I don't know first, any of you. You are a journalist. <laughs> you are a journalist. I'm a journalist, but an American... Uh, Can I interview you a little I bit? I think it might be a better idea, actually. Yes, no, please. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the Times of Israel? Oh, gosh, Yossi, really, that's, that's, that's very kind. Um, <laughs> and a very, very good question. <laughs> The, the, the Times of Israel, uh, judging from what you've said about your mother, if she was my mother, she would have told me it's a terrible idea. Uh, you're in a profession that has basically, you know, destroyed itself commercially because you've given away your product for nothing, and now, you know, how are you, you going to make a living with this product? So this is a, a, an internet site that tries to cover Israel fairly for an audience in Israel and, and around the world, and hopefully we will get to break even at some point. 
I do not envisage um, a sell-off in the $400 million. Uh, it was uh, not because of me, you know, I told you. But uh, no, it's, uh, I think it's doing valuable journalism. And then one of the nice things that we just started doing is we just started, thank you. <clears throat> we just started an Arabic. You are, you are, you are wasting, an, you are wasting an, an, an opportunity. opportunity. What should I be saying, Yossi? You what? should say the following. Yes. Anybody in the audience who is reading <laughs> Times of Israel, raise your hand. Excellent. Excellent. Thank Not you. enough. Anybody who is going to begin to read it from tomorrow, raise your hand. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I did not realize this event was going to turn into, but it's, but it's very welcome and thank you. I just want to say one very last brief thing about that, which is that we just started an Arabic version of the site, which is to give the Arab world an Israeli narrative, and no one else is doing that. So you I see, this is part of the success of Israel. We never stop to promote each other. We <laughs> can fight with each other, but we always against the common enemy, we are uniting. Okay, Yossi. <laughs> <laughs> I think somehow we have lurched towards the end of our allotted time. And I'm going to ask you one last question, which I've asked various other people from this platform in very, very substantive, but possibly less jovial conversations. What is jovial? Which is uh, humorous. Ah, OK. My English, you know. Yes, but you're, you know, the humor is. Anyway, 5, 10, 20 years from now, what are the sources of your optimism about the state of Israel? Don't look all so serious. No, no first of all, I have a genetic disorder. You know, I was born uh, optimist. <laughs> and, and no, and my source of optimism, I look back on what we accomplished. You know, see, when, when the, the country was created, there were 600,000 people, highly motivated. You know, we went through wars, and we went through difficulties, and we went through sanctions, and we went through this, and we went through through that, and we were able always to, to be, be active and be energetic and develop things. And as I said, not only the high tech, it was, uh, it was the, the industry, the defense, everything. So uh, you know uh, what they say. They say if it doesn't kill you, it make you stronger, OK? So so far, we got stronger. And I believe we will continue to do like this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what a pleasure, what a privilege. Yossi Vardy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.